Hello, I'm Ellie Hoffman, president of the Simsbury Women's Club. I'm here to introduce you to the taping that was done of the Gifts of the Community Luncheon on April 8th. At the luncheon, the Women's Club shared the proceeds of our 44th annual Arts and Crafts Festival with local nonprofit organizations. Before we proceed with the presentations, I would like to read a poem written many years ago by a Simsbury Women's Club member. It helps set the tone for today's activities. We are volunteers. We love this great wide country and do the best we can to make life the better living for every fellow man. We are ever on the ready when e'er we get the call to help a human being, be he great or small. We raise a lot of money and have such good fun too and then make the big decision on who to give it to. We help students go to college to get an education, plus reach out to our community. We love the participation. In membership and numbers, we are many thousands strong, which makes us all the better with forces of the throng. Under Federation's banner, we have marched a hundred years, and our light will keep on shining because we are volunteers. We hope you enjoy learning about the many organizations that support our community. I want to thank Helen Casalino and Jean Staley for all of their hard work in putting this luncheon together and the committee that's worked with them. Um, at our head table, we have a couple of people I'd like to introduce. Um, in the red jacket is Jean Sumner, who was co-chairman of the Arts and Crafts Festival, the reason that we're here today. Um, the striped shirt is Nancy Fellinger, uh, who helped put the invitations and the checks together for us. And Nancy Fossum is hiding. She's supposed to be up at the head table. <laughs> she also. <laughs> and we have a special guest, Mary Glassman. We're always delighted to have Mary with us and to have her share her perspective on what's going on in town. Thank you. Well, good afternoon. Thank you, Ellie and Jean, for your wonderful uh, invitation. And uh, congratulations to the uh, Women's Club for all your hard work. I also want to say this is, one of, this is the, my favorite lunch every year. Um, not only it's uh, good food, it's good conversation, it's good causes, and it's really an honor to be here. I also want to echo uh, my thanks to uh, Helen and uh, also for all the hard work, and Jean for the beautiful decorations. Congratulations to you. And if you'll um, bear with me, I'm a little tired this morning. Um, any Huskies fans in the house? All right, go Huskies! What a wonderful, uh, what a wonderful celebration last night. If you were up past midnight watching the game, um, but it's a testament to a great team. It brought a lot of honor to our state. And uh, being a UConn grad and a UConn law school grad, I'm a double Husky. So this is a, a double, uh, double celebration. But I'm not going to be as tired uh, as I'm not as tired as I will be tomorrow um, when I stay up tonight to watch the ladies win uh, the national championship. So uh, we wish them good luck as well. So, <laughs> and uh, I have a brother who's a photographer for the Hartford Current, and he uh, drew the short straw, and he actually uh, is a photographer for the game last night in Dallas. So make sure you look for uh, my brother's <laughs> pictures. <now. So. laughs> Well, this is uh, this really, truly is a wonderful day. It's a wonderful celebration. Um, it's really, I think, the best, the best that there is about Simsbury. I'm so proud to uh, be leading our community. Um, this is uh, my, um, should I say, 16th year um, as first selectman, going into my 16th year. So I've been uh, blessed to uh, really see the best of our community, and I think uh, the fact that. The Arts and Crafts Show, well, if you, let me just say, if you ever want to uh, schedule a day when it's great outside, make sure you schedule it on the day that, of the Arts and Crafts Show uh, because we've had really great weather, and uh, this will be the 45th year that Ellie tells me, so congratulations, 45 years, it's incredible. 
But the fact that all of you work so hard uh, to bring the arts and craft show to our community, not only for us uh, to see our neighbors and our friends and to really um, appreciate all of the wonderful talent that we see at the craft show, but really what you do uh, with your energies and with your time and uh, supporting all these great causes. And uh, as I look around the room, there's a tremendous need um, in our community and in our communities across Connecticut. But uh, the fact that there are so many people that come together and, and uh, work hard and support just what makes our town such a great town. Um, I think what, if I could summarize Simsbury in one word, I think I would say uh, collaboration. You know, we, um, we're just a town that gives back, that gives their times and their, their time and their talent uh, to help those in need and also just to make our town the great town it is. Um, everything from, you know, I'm, I'm heading into budget season. We have a hearing Thursday night to mark your calendar. And the referendum's May 6th, right, Marge Dushenko? Make sure uh, that we put that on our calendars. Um, but as we prepare the budget and we look for ways uh, to save money, and this year I'm pleased to say that uh, the budgets that we're bringing in will not raise taxes. So that's a good cause to, to clout. Uh, this will be the first time in the last six years we've really held the line on the town budget, but the Board of Ed budget also is a piece of the budget, and that budget has increased. And this year uh, we really focused on putting budgets together that didn't raise taxes, and uh, I'm really excited that we're going to have a hearing that, uh, with budgets that don't do that and yet uh, allow us to provide good services. But as we prepare those budgets, you know, we look at um, all of the things that we don't pay for in town. You know, um, all the flowers that you see, you know, all, that's all done by volunteers and the beautification committee and the women's club, the garden club. Uh, the Drake Hill Flower Bridge, who's uh, any volunteers in the house for the Drake Hill Flower Bridge? Um, you know, all that's done by volunteers. Um, we have volunteers in our schools. We have volunteers in our library. Um, we have uh, eliminated the position in town hall of town receptionist, and we have volunteers who welcome folks to our town hall and give directions and, and help out. Um, we have folks involved in the police department. We have folks uh, involved in our churches helping us. And we just started a program called uh, the Community of Care in Simsbury. And um, if you haven't heard about it, um, you'll be hearing about it. Mickey LaCour is back, who uh, leads our social service department. Uh, we started noticing that um, we needed to do more to really uh, focus on the youth in our community, our seniors, um, helping each other. And we created this committee uh, really just to really be neighbors helping neighbors, to make sure that folks know who their neighbors are and uh, folks who know who to call when someone needs help. So it's a volunteer, all volunteer group, um, completely free for the town of Simsbury. And uh, what they'll be doing over the next uh, well, beginning this week and over the next few weeks and few months is really highlighting some of the needs in our community, reaching out, helping parents, supporting parents and educating them on what's happening in our schools, um, helping connect um, neighbors with neighbors. If you recall a few years ago uh, with, the, with the awful power outages, um, we developed a list of folks who live alone and a list of volunteers who are willing to just call them in times of a, of a crisis and just say, hey, I know the power's out, are you okay? You know, do you need something? And uh, I think that's what makes our town the wonderful place that it is to live. You know, we wanna make sure people in our community are physically healthy, so we have volunteers who help um, lead our bike uh, friendly activities and clear our trails and keep that going. But we wanna make sure folks are um, emotionally healthy as well and make sure that they're active socially, make sure that they know uh, there's a number of programs through our own town that will support them and uh, will connect them to services that they might need. So I'm just thrilled to be here. I, I really love hearing all of your stories. Thank you to all the organizations also for all the hard work that you do in making us a, a great community. Thanks again for inviting me. Thank you, Mary. Um, I also don't want to overlook Karen Hanville, who's sitting here faithfully taping us. Uh, we appreciate the support from SCTV. They're here every year recording this event so that other people in town have an opportunity to see what goes on. So thank you for doing that. OK. Um, We'll start. I'll have Jean come up. And as we read your organization's name, if 
the representative would come up and accept the check on their behalf. We would appreciate it. All right. All right, we'll start with South Park Inn. While she's coming up, I want to say I did not do this alone. Shirley Barsness is my co-chair. She moved to Florida last summer and flew back up here just to be here to help the weekend of the Arts and Crafts Show. So she was a big help, and I don't want to forget her, too. Thank you. Thank you as well. Um, Thank you to all the women who put the Arts and Crafts Fair together. I've been a number of years, and uh, I'm always amazed at the quality of the vendors you have, um, you know, from the actual art and the crafts side of things. So I appreciate how much work goes into that and uh, your devotion to making it happen every year and that fact that you consider us a beneficiary of that. So thank you very much. A couple words about South Park Inn. I'm sure you've heard them before because you've been funding us for over 10 years now. Um, but just a reminder that we are an emergency shelter as well as transitional living and supportive housing. So we kind of run the continuum of housing services for women, children, and uh, single men. Uh, this year, we're really focusing on our veterans. Um, there is a large population of veterans that are actually homeless, uh, which is very surprising to many people. And uh, within the past year, we served ourselves about 196 of those, which is a small percentage across the state, uh, but it's an area where we're really trying to focus and recognize what's going on and to work towards ending uh, homelessness among our veterans. On your tables, I left some postcards for an event that we're having next month, which is highlighting uh, veterans and raising money to, to support the programs that we provide for them. Um, and we have actually a client, a veteran client of ours that graduated from our program coming to talk about the very different struggles that they face from um, any other homeless person. Um, and the additional red tape and burdens that they have to go through in order to solve those problems. But he's at Manchester Community College, living independently, working through those things, so the successes definitely happen. Uh, but the support that you provide to us makes that possible. And without um, every single one of you and every single church group that you represent, because I know many of you uh, go to churches and provide meals and do other things for us, um, every single little bit of that uh, contributes to us being able to do what we do, and we couldn't do it without you, so thanks. Just a, a kind of a warning, we've got a, a long cord over here, so when you come up, be careful not to trip, or you end up like Karen. <laughs> uh, Simsbury Community Television. so much thank you. thank you so much it's always a thrill to be invited to this event every year and to see all the other organizations and all the good work that all of you do uh, some of you know me as attorney blackburn today i'm wearing uh, one of my other hats as president of simsbury community television i'd like to tell you a little bit about uh, our organization and i'll make every effort to keep this uh, brief, the, uh, our nonprofit was formed back in 1984 by a group of very dedicated residents who really had a vision for the town uh, to bring a local public access television station to Simsbury. We're very unique in that regard. There are not many towns that have this wonderful, valuable uh, tool. We are an all volunteer board of 12 members. We have uh, three employees. Karen, our station manager, is here once again to film this uh, wonderful event. And we have a lot of really exciting things that we're working on right now, like many other organizations that are nonprofits. We have some uh, challenges. We're looking to do some fundraising. So your gift today, your generosity, the generosity from those of you in the audience is so important, uh, so critical for us to continue to fulfill that mission um, there's three branches of our mission, really. It's 
public ad educational and governmental access programming. We're often referred to as a PEG station, P-E-G, uh, for that reason. And we have a wonderful relationship with the town. We do uh, filming for many of the public hearings, other important events in town. So I invite you to tune in um, to channels 5, 95, and 96. You can also find out an awful lot about what's going on in your town right from your living room with a cup of coffee, a glass of wine, and know what's going on. And there's a great deal going on right now. So once again, I just thank you for your generosity. We're thrilled to be here again. Next up, my sister's place. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank you very much. I'm happy to be here again. Rather than go through the whole litany of things that my sister's place does for families and children and homeless mothers, I thought I'd share with you three stories on how your money might be used. Think of a family that has two minimum wage earners and has a $1,200 a month rent bill and a car and two kids and sort of holds it together. And then the transmission in the car goes and they have to make a decision about paying the rent or fixing the car. And if they don't fix the car, they lose the job. Well, they fixed the car, lost the apartment, ended up living in the car, they fixed the car, lost the apartment, moved into the car, and ended up in a shelter. And they still kept both jobs, but the reason that they didn't have a place to live was they couldn't afford the security deposit. So for about 600 people a year, we provide security deposits. So that doesn't happen. So then if it's $1,000 or $1,200, think of this, for a family of four, it's $300 a piece. Doesn't get much better than that. In our support of housing, we have a family with five children from two mothers, both of which are unable to take care of the kids. And the aunt left the military and is taking care of those five kids. And just think of the chance that those kids would have if they didn't have an aunt to take care of them. The family would be split up. Um, they'd be in the foster care system. And all that costs about 800 bucks a month. So that's pretty good. And then this is a true story, real, happening today. In late November, we had a mom come to us from a shelter with a two-month-old baby. The baby looked okay, but didn't act right. And so Yukon Pediatric does on-site pediatric work for us, and they looked at the baby, and they said the baby's really sick. And the baby went over to Children's, and they found out that the baby had leukemia. And the baby was admitted to Children's. And the first two courses of treatment that they chose didn't work. But the third one did. And he's home. He goes back and forth. But she moved from transitional living into permanent housing so that we could take care of her and the baby while they go through this crisis. And that's all done with private money. So thank you very much for your good work and thanks for the money. The old Drake Hill Flower Bridge. Hi there, um, I'm Evelyn Holland and I'm the outgoing chairman of the Drake Hill Flower Bridge. Um, after listening to my sister's place, I'm kind of choked up. Um, I just wanted to, you know, thank you for inviting us again and for um, donating to our <coughs> lovely flower bridge. Um, it's good to see so many familiar faces of friends and neighbors. Um, 
this past year was a good year for the Flower Bridge. Um, the town has really, uh, the town and the f surrounding towns have really embraced us and have been very generous and we were able to make a lot of repairs to the irrigation system which we had nicknamed the irritation system <laughs> because routinely we would be watering the river and uh, you know lots of leaks and so forth but you know with with anything else you know exposed to the elements um, things break down on a regular basis so we have made a lot of repairs last year to the irrigation system and this year our goal is the electrical system which uh, keeps automatically tripping itself at night and <laughs> so forth and so on so any you know donations that we get are very very much appreciated um, we also instituted a holiday tree at the end of the bridge this year which we have named the betty hudson uh, holiday tree because the lady who lives in that lovely little home that is sometimes in the farmington river is uh, <laughs> used to put um, lights on the tree herself and uh, you know paid for for everything herself and was not able to do it so we thought for all of her years of service it would be a nice thing to dedicate this tree to her so that lovely little exclamation point as she calls it at the end of the bridge is the Betty Hudson holiday tree um, let's see the other things I want to say um, we did a lot of revision of our bylaws this year and um, instituted a manual on uh, how everything runs with the bridge because in the past it was like 13 incredibly dedicated people who really just worked to get that bridge going and then we had this wonderful infusion of retired teachers come join us and they just are great workers and now we have to get organized so that we can pass everything down <laughs> and know this is what you're supposed to do. Um, so without further ado, I'd like to introduce Deej McKay, who is one of the co-chairs who uh, has taken, who I've passed the baton to. And um, I wanted her to tell, to introduce herself and tell uh, about one of our fundraisers that we will be having in June. And thank you all again. This is very much appreciated. <clears throat> Thanks, Evelyn. I'm Deej McKay, and I'm co-chair with Shireen Wassel, who's another former teacher, but she's substituting today, so she can't be here. Um, but we wanted to invite you uh, June 18th from 4.30 to 7 to the bridge for Burgers on the Bridge. And some of you may have gone um, last year, but it's really a fun event. We do hot dogs, hamburgers, veggie burgers, um, with cheese or without, um, beer, wine, soda, water, uh, and dessert and chips. And we have um, Catherine Elliott, uh, one of the local artists, will be painting on the bridge. And then we also have music. But it's a lovely time to enjoy the bridge, which is in the end of May, we put the flowers on. They're growing right now in the pick-and-patch greenhouses, but um, it's a really nice place for solitude or just bring friends or walk the bridge. So we sure hope we'll have you visit us on June 18th, and we also have a rain date of the 19th. <coughs> Thank you very much. Uh, Simsbury Social Services, Mickey? The economy is getting better if you have a job or if you have money invested in the stock market. But for over 600 Simsbury residents that are still un unemployed, they continue to struggle. Our food assistance program increased by 34% this year. We continue to have 300 Simsbury families on the energy assistance program. And when they exhaust those benefits, um, we can help them through the Keep Simsbury Warm program, which is all donated funds. So I thank the women's, uh, Simsbury Women's Club for their donation and for their help the entire year round. Thank you. Connecticut Ballet. Uh, contrary to how I am shaped, uh, I, I uh, or you pretty much obviously can tell I never was a ballet dancer. <laughs> a little too tall, nobody could ever pick me up. But I'm very interested in ballet, and Connecticut Ballet is a professional company and a nonprofit for all of the state of Connecticut. We put on three performances, three major 
uh, full-length ballets every year. We did, um, we're doing Giselle in two weeks. We did Sleeping Beauty, um, or Cinderella, excuse me, last fall. We did the Nutcracker in Stamford. This being a, a, a ballet company with professional dancers who do outreach work in schools and in towns and in performances of public spaces, they need to be paid. They need to eat. I know they're thin, but they still need some food. <laughs> and this contribution certainly helps out keeping a professional company in the state of Connecticut. Connecticut is a very cultural place, and I want to keep it that way. Thank you so much to the Women's Club. Volunteer Ambulance. My name is Shannon Harville. This is my first luncheon with all of you. And I got to tell you, the food was awesome. I'm stuffed. <laughs> Delicious. Um, I want to thank you for the wonderful donation and just being a part of such a wonderful group of people that are also receiving donations. Simsbury Volunteer Ambulance has been around for 57 years, providing emergency services for our community in Simsbury. We also help out in other towns when they need us as well. We have over 58 volunteer members that volunteer their time and their talent. Um, they have other jobs, they have full-time jobs, we have moms, we have students, we have business owners, we have lawyers, all kinds of people helping out. We have a small full-time staff of paramedics that also provide advanced services in town for those in need. And I have to tell you, this money that is donated to our organization, which is a private nonprofit organization, goes back into the community because we use it to educate the community, educate our volunteers, or buy new equipment that's desperately needed. If you've looked around town, you may have seen the heart safe signs as you enter the town. Karen Stewart, one of, the one of our paramedic members who was originally a volunteer, put that program together to ensure that we had AEDs in the community, that we had people trained to use them, people trained to do CPR. Every month she gets calls about CPR classes, and so we're filling up, and so we continue to give back in the community that way because your help, our help, the help of the town and the police department make us a stronger, more healthier town. So we appreciate this from the bottom of our heart, and thank you again for considering Simsbury. The Helen and Harry Gray Cancer Center. Hi, my name is Jenny Sagers, and I work for the Helen and Harry Gray Cancer Center in Avon. The Helen and Harry Gray Cancer Center would like to thank the Simsbury Women's Club for the generous gift. This dona donation provides necessary assistance to our cancer patients. Our patients face many challenges with their newly diagnoses. Your generosity directs, directly eases some of their daily struggles, providing wigs, transportation, and other means of assistance. And we all, we want to thank you for being there for our patients. Simsbury Summer Theater. Is anyone here? Farmington Valley VNA. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is N.C. Muir. I'm the director of the Farmington Valley Visiting Nurse Association. And I'd like to extend our sincere thanks to Ellie, Jean, and all of the women of the Simsbury Women's Club for always inviting our agency and other community groups to this wonderful luncheon. It's been many years since I've been coming and it's just always such a, a wonderful event and the effort that you make is truly tremendous. Uh, so many of us <laughs> benefit from your work throughout the year. Our organization is a nonprofit home health agency and hospice and we also have a department that is committed to illness prevention and health maintenance. We have been in the community since 1908, so if you do the math, we are celebrating 106 years of being here in the Simsbury community. We're actually still housed in the building on old, uh, at 8 Old Mill Lane that was built in the 1930s, <coughs> and that is where our office remains today. And we're so ingrained in the, the tradition here within Simsbury and are so proud of that. Our uh, mission has always been to care for anyone regardless of ability to pay, and that continues today. However, that gets more and more difficult. 
each day. We do not turn anyone away from services, but our funding continues to decrease each year. Even though the Affordable Care Act in Obamacare um, has a lot of positive attributes to it, unfortunately, the other side of that is in the Medicare program relative to home health reimbursement, we are going to continue to see anywhere from 3 to 4 percent decreases in our reimbursement for the next four years. And not only here in Connecticut, but nationally, our associations are predicting that probably 50 percent of home health agencies may close their doors because they will be operating at a deficit. That is the untoward effect of some of this. And then if you add state funding, which unfortunately is we incur 30 percent losses uh, with state funding and our, our reimbursement has been uh, leveled for the past eight years, there's really nowhere to make up the difference other than from donations uh, and the, the generosity of groups such as the Simsbury Women's Club and our, our residents. So it's extremely important. Otherwise, we would not be able to deliver the care that we do to everyone. We would have to start making some decisions about that or risk not being in business any longer. I just do want to brag a little bit just for one moment just to let you know that uh, a huge accomplishment for our organization this year for the second year in a row is that we were selected as a 2013 Home Care Elite Agency. And what that means, that's an independent compilation of data right from the federal government's uh, data bank uh, that ranked us in the top 100 home health agencies in the country. And that ranking is based upon patient care outcomes, quality assurance efforts, financial performance, and client family satisfaction. We are only two, of agents, two agencies in Connecticut that reached the top 100, and we're the only nonprofit. Considering our limited resources, our small size, and the fact that we're not part of a hospital or a big corporation, our ability to do that is just tremendous, and I am extremely proud of the organization. And I think it also assures our community of the high quality that we deliver, being very efficient, very effective, and still caring for everyone. But again, donations such as this make that work possible, and we sincerely thank you. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Simsbury ABC program. Well, thank you for inviting me to this luncheon. It was delicious. Um, I particularly like the pistachio pineapple <laughs> gel. It was delicious. I need that recipe. Um, I have been at the ABC house for four years. My husband and I are resident directors. My husband is the cook. And uh, we serve seven students at the house. Uh, these students are underrepresented minority students that come from areas such as New York, uh, New Haven. Uh, we had one from Hamden. This year we have some, uh, one of our students from Atlanta with us. And the program um, does a lot for our students. Um, our students unfortunately are from areas where the resources are low and education um, is, not served, is not served to them as it, as it is in um, towns like Simsbury. Um, some students that we've had um, have had tremendous success with this program. Uh, we have a, one example is a student, Tyleek. He was with us three years ago. His mother, unfortunately, was diagnosed with AIDS, and um, he had a really difficult upbringing. And coming to Simsbury, I never knew what his background was. And it only was until I read his application, his college application, that I was, that I, um, I'm sorry, it's a little, a little emotional for me because he uh, was kind of a difficult student. Um, but in reading his college application, that's when I found out about his mother's condition and his brothers and sisters and how they had really little resources. And coming to this program, not only was he able to have the educational resources, but the resources of the town. Uh, Simsbury has so much to offer to our students where they wouldn't have where they were, where they lived. Um, and he was able to get a full ride to Northeastern University full ride. And in, when he got that acceptance letter, I think he was shocked because he didn't think that was possible for him. And that's one of the things that Simsbury ABC does for our students. They give them the idea that they can do more. And um, donations like this help us keep the house going, 
helps us feed them. Uh, you know, as you can imagine, teenage boys eat a lot. Uh, but uh, it provides them a house to live in um, and a really, really good town to grow up in and, and blossom and become the students and the adults that they can be. First generation in their families usually to graduate college, I mean graduate high school, uh, and to go to college. So we thank you and we appreciate it and um, hopefully we get to see you again next year. <laughs> thank you. Thank you again. <laughs> thank you. The new McLean Development Office. I'm Vicki Duranzo and I'm with McLean. Um, two years ago we changed from a foundation to a development office which is for tax reasons so that's, that's all that means. So we don't have to pay as many taxes. And, um, I just wanted to thank you for the invitation to come again this year. Last year was the first year that I came um, to the luncheon which was wonderful and last year I sat with Nancy Bird and I just have never met such nice people in my life and she was just wonderful and I just wanted to to share that because she was so interesting and so interested in everything I had to say too and I just think that typifies all of you here I mean everyone is just so nice and welcoming and and I really do miss her not being here this year um, as far as your gifts we're so thankful for them um, your gifts specifically help out the Meals on Wheels program and although we have a CCRC, many of our programs are open to the public and have to be supplemented because we are a nonprofit. So our Meals on Wheels program, the rehab, the home care, the hospice, a lot of those programs we really depend on the don donations for and we're very thankful to have them. Thanks. Uh, bring up the Salvation Army. Well, thank you all for inviting the Salvation Army here um, and this being my first time here. I did not know I was going to have such a wonderful lunch, so thank you. <laughs> and I'm glad I'm not the only tea drinker in the room. <laughs> wonderful group of people back at the table. Um, on behalf of the Salvation Army, I would like to thank the Women's Simsbury, sorry, the Simsbury's Women's Club for giving us this fine donation. Um, we are a pretty big nonprofit. We've been in this state for 135 years. Um, but one of the things about the Salvation Army I like to say is that it's not the people in uniform who make things happen, it's the volunteers. And so you being volunteers, you are now all drafted into this <laughs> army. <laughs> that being said, um, our founders of the Salvation Army, William and Catherine Booth, and when they started out, um, started something called the Christian Mission, and they were doing their annual report. And um, when they were reading it, it started to say this volunteer army, and they scratched out the word volunteer and wrote in salvation, um, and meaning that volunteers are the basis of everything that we do. And so when we're helping that child learn to read or helping that parent um, learn to read from their child, you guys were there helping us do it. When that um, family moves out of our shelter into their apartment, having been established for the first time, you made that happen. When it's the young woman or the young man who gets off of drugs and is finding their first stable job, you made that happen. When we're saluting the soldiers who are coming home from battlefields or even at the VA, you made that happen. Thank you so much. Simsbury Aging and Disability Commission. Hey, good afternoon. My name is Ed Lamonte, and I'm chairman of the Simsbury Aging and Disability Commission. And you know, they say that there's no such thing as a free lunch. Well, there's two exceptions to that. This lunch today and our Super Tuesday event. Now, I've been a member of the commission for almost 20 years, and the Super Tuesday event precedes my tenure on the commission. I did some quick calculations, and I determined that since that time, that we have provided over 17,000 lunches, which is probably more than what you have. <laughs> so you can imagine how much further you have to go to catch up to the Super <laughs> Tuesday event. Uh, it, it's, a, it's a wonderful event. We do it se seven times a year. We have approximately 100 seniors from the Thomas Simsbury that partake in the lunches. And uh, you, you know, if it wasn't for organizations such as this, uh, we couldn't be able to do that. So. On behalf of the Aging and Disability Commission, I extend my thanks to you for allowing us to continue with our Super Tuesday event, and I look forward to the next 20 years. Thank you. Thank you. 
YMCA Camp Jewel. I just want to thank everyone for inviting um, us here once again today. Um, <clears throat> coming to this luncheon so reminds me of growing up in the Midwest. Um, we had these a lot of times Sunday afternoons in the springtime right around Easter. Um, and so this is just its very memorable to me to come and be a part of this every year. So thank you so much. Um, when I was here a year ago, I was actually about seven months pregnant. So I can imagine most of you can attest to the fact that the last year of my life has been very different. <laughs> um, but one of the things that it has taught me is just how important Camp Jewel really is. Um, I've lived it, I've worked it, um, but now it's very personal to me because I know that growing up my son will have a place um, where there are caring adults in his life. And that's one of the missions of the Camp Jewel Y, which is part of the Hartford YMCA, is to put a caring adult in the life of every child. Um, kids come out to camp oftentimes for the first time where they get a chance to be themselves, uh, a chance where people don't judge them and they're not afraid to speak their mind. Uh, it gives them a chance to learn confidence and self-esteem. And that's not something you can teach in a classroom. It's something you have to live and experience for yourself. Um, so thank you all so much for this donation and for giving us the opportunity um, to reach out to more kids and to change more lives. Thank you. Simsbury Community Band. Interval House. Hello everyone, thank you for having me today. This is my first experience with this lunch as well and hopefully I'll be here again next year as well. Um, my name is Amy and I'm a development assistant at Interval House. So I process all the checks that come in. So I get to see all the money that comes in, but I don't get to see, <coughs> excuse me, Nervous. <laughs> uh, I don't get to see the pride behind most of the checks that come in. So this is just a wonderful experience today. Real quick, uh, <laughs> Inval House is, uh, we're Connecticut's largest domestic violence intervention and prevention program. And we service 24 towns in and around central Connecticut. Um, we have a 24 hour hotline a 20-bed emergency shelter that we operate seven days a week and we have services such as counseling, referral, safety planning, um, and support groups as well as court advocacy in civil and criminal courts and all of those services are free so without support from groups like you we wouldn't be able to do this so thank you very much. Farmington Rivershed, she's not here? All right. Okay. All right, that concludes the presentation of our checks to the community. Uh, we wanna thank everyone for sharing about your organization. I certainly learned some new things today and hopefully you all did too. What a wonderful group of people working together we have here. Um, I want to thank again our food committee and for the luncheon that they put on. Uh, your centerpieces, the pansies we are suggesting go to the person who has the birthday closest to today. Not the basket. <laughs> but not the basket. <laughs> so if you have a birthday closest to today, you can take the pansies home. Remember, all of this was, was made possible because of the Arts and Crafts Festival. Uh, we will be atten having our, yeah, <laughs> easy for me to say, 45th anniversary event, September 13th and 14th. So we encourage you all to come. Uh, free parking, free admission. Of course, we gladly accept donations. Um, it's, as somebody said earlier, it's a wonderful time to be in town. There are so many things going on. We have the flower bridge, we have bike trails, we have hiking trails. Uh, our merchants in town are certainly open for business. So make it a wonderful weekend and help support the arts and crafts so that we can again have a luncheon like this and give back to the community next year. Thank you, thank you again.
Funding for Simsbury Community Television is provided in part by contributions from viewers like you. Thank you.